Hello again, and welcome to the Prince Magnum channel. I'm your host, Prince Magnum. Welcome once again to Surviving Romance. Uh, this is a special episode of Surviving Romance, and before we get underway, uh, let me give uh, two uh, uh, give you all two little tidbits of information that you need to know about at this very moment. Number one, this is video footage that I was going to use for Surviving Romance, but, you know, it was kind of boring, you know. Uh, just didn't make a very good video, so this is just kind of filler, you know, while I narrate. The second is that this is an inspiration uh, given to me by a member of the Maverick Nation, uh, Miss Natalie. Um, she finally gave me the courage to do this video, and this is, video has been in the making for the last three years. So, Natalie, thank you again for giving me the courage to do this. Um, let me all tell you uh, up front that every man who has lived a little bit of a, a life um, has two stories in his love life. He has the story about the woman that got away, and he has a story about the woman that broke his heart. Well, I am no exception to this rule. I have, this is the story about the woman that broke my heart. This is not her fault. Um, it is a tragic story so I will give a warning if you're one of those sensitive types that cries real easy and you don't like to cry I'll understand if you stop the video right now alright let's go back in time to the year 2005 2006 has been a moment <laughs> basically um, my alcoholism was reaching new lows and despite all of this, I still had friends. Um, at this time, I'm still with my high school sweetheart, uh, which was an off and on, again, relationship. <coughs> uh, we had two children together, uh, my two oldest. And uh, what ended up happening was, basically, uh, she got tired of my crap and had left taking our two daughters with them you know with her um, that is not the story I am going to tell you about the story I'm gonna tell you about is basically when this happened um, I went on a bender from hell for three days and was going to commit suicide on my couch with a loaded 357 Magnum Prince Magnum anyhow um, basically I was gonna commit suicide And uh, it was a friend that stopped me. She called me just as I was about to do it. I guess she felt a disturbance in the force for all of you Star Wars fans out there. And the conversation sounded like this. She calls up, says, what are you doing? I'm sitting here on the couch. What are you really doing? I'm sitting here on the couch. I was just about to use my 357 to end it all. And like any good friend, she chewed me out. That was my friend Tanya. Um, Tanya's story with in my life started back in 2005. Basically, she was a CNA student in the nursing home that I worked in. And uh, basically, the nursing home I worked in, you could get your CNA license and work there at the same time. And um, basically, you know that was you know they they provided the service while you worked you know so it was a great way to get your license and a lot of nursing homes used to do this now it's kind of becoming a thing of the past but anyhow um, in that time frame I got to know Tanya and uh, I used to throw drinking parties where I said I wasn't drinking but we all know better those spider webs got taken care of pretty easily but anyhow uh, became very good friends with Tanya uh, and at the time I was uh, I started getting sober uh, she was getting ready to go through a divorce um, and she was dating my best friend so the, it, already you could tell this is getting a little dicey um, when she talked me into outpatient treatment if you're a true diehard fan of the Prince Magnum channel you'll know the video that I'm talking where I briefly mentioned this um, 
She was my only supporter outside of an AA meeting. And uh, basically, in a nutshell, uh, in the first month and a half of my sobriety, um, I got to see what kind of a special woman she was. And I ended up falling in love with her. But I kept those feelings quiet because of the simple fact that she was seeing my best friend while going through this divorce. Uh, so I kept these feelings very quiet. So let's fast forward to the last week of this story because that's where the real meat and potatoes really is. Basically, I was getting ready to start my fourth step and I did not want to do it until I talked to Tanya. Now, I didn't come out and tell her I was madly in love with her, but I did come out and tell her that I was harboring very serious feelings about her. Um, in not so many words, I told her that I owed her my life and that um, that I believed that there was living angels walking among us and she was one of them and how I pitied the rest of the world that they didn't know her like I knew her. Um, so you can already tell how deep these feelings go. Basically, um, I didn't come out and just say it, but I was preluding to the fact that I was in love with her. Um, let's fast forward to Friday. Uh, she called out of work. She was in the hospital with what looked like pneumonia. Um, you'll have to excuse me. This is really hard. We didn't get to go see her until... They wouldn't let us see her because she was in rough shape. But basically the next day my best friend went in there and she had, they talked for a good long while and they she had asked to, to speak with me specifically. Um, and this was on a Saturday. Uh, Sunday came. I called out of work just to do this. I got dressed up to go see her. Bought a dozen of roses. I was going to tell her I was head over heels in love with her. I go in, and I was stopped at the door. Evidently, she had died twice, and they brought her back, and she was in a coma at this moment. Um, and she was not expected to live. So, so much for just routine uh, pneumonia, right? Well, what ended up happening was, uh, in the process, I got to meet her dad and that sort of thing, and... Um, um, got to know the family, uh, wonderful family, and uh, and that sort of thing. And in a nutshell, um, this is Sunday, and uh, it's, God, it seemed like forever that all this was going on. I went home for the night. It was about 3 in the morning. I got up at 8 o'clock, went back in, and they said that we'd lost her again last night. They brought her back, and pretty much they had said that if she goes again, we're going to let her go. They finally started letting us go back and see her. And uh, her dad had basically said that he was encouraging all of us that if she, you know, to tell her if if she wanted to go, she could, uh, that it was okay, that we would be all right. So basically, my best friend that she had been dating, uh, another one of us friends and myself went in, sat down with her, and I held her hand and she was so cold so cold I held her hand and I was the one out of all of us that had to basically say if you want to go it's okay we'll be okay um that was the last time I saw Tanya alive I went to work and at about 6 o'clock 6.30 my director of nursing came back and told us all that she had passed away um, 
basically Tanya passed before I had a chance to tell her I was madly in love with her. So it's not her fault that my heart got broken. Um, I did the whole funeral thing and uh, managed to get through that whole ordeal, stayed sober. Um, many, many have came and went and uh, when my wife heard this story, um, she she burst into tears and um, she couldn't believe it. You know, this is like something you would hear in a movie. Um, you know, this it's like I've had I've had people tell me that this would make one hell of a movie. Um, basically, um, you know, it's it's still hard to talk about, and we're talking. This has been uh, eleven years ago. You know. Uh, almost 11 years ago that she passed on and um, it's still hard um, but I will tell you that my wife uh, Princess Faye d never feels any jealousy over this as a matter of fact um, w I do uh, visit Tanya's gravesite once a year and usually I, I leave another year coin behind as a thank you because my sobriety wouldn't you know I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for her so basically you know I I still you know I leave coins for her. matter of fact she was buried with a one-month coin because uh, she got to see me make one month but pretty much um, you know after all this time you know it's still hard to talk about um, so there's my story. Um, so wives, if you ever get your husband aside, he may have. He probably has a story like this too. And maybe the day will come when I'll tell you about the one that got away, you know. But uh, for right now, I think this is a this is one of those stories uh, that that really does kind of, you know, um, it, it definitely is definitely one that's been long overdue. Uh, real quick, uh, Princess Faye herself now leaves um, yearly coins because she too is in recovery. And she actually wrote a letter to Tanya, uh, a letter of thanks I, that I never re got to read, but I know it was a big thank you letter uh, for keeping me alive for her. So there you have it, folks. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, Again, I want to thank uh, Natalie for giving me the courage to finally sit down and do this video. It's been very hard to do this, but it took uh, it took a subscriber from the you know from the Maverick Nation to finally get me to do this one. So, thank you again, Natalie, from the bottom of my heart. Big thank you. Uh, if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you're not a member of the Maverick Nation, join up. Okay, this proves that. You guys have a lot more say-so than you'd like to think about the, the Prince Magnum channel. You know, I do value my subscribers, uh, my members of the Maverick Nation. I'm just your voice of, you know, of, um, you know, I'm just your voice. You know, all of you know what I know. As always, get out there and work on a project. If you have a sweetheart, sweep them off their feet and as always for all of you out there and to the woman I never got to tell that I was in love with if nobody has told any of you that they love you today Prince Magnum does God bless you and have a happy 24 thank you
how many lives do you think I'd, I'd say? The French Random Channel rocks. <laughs>